So a couple of things I want to demonstrate uh, if you're planning on using a protein for uh, animating uh, in Maya is uh, let's say I wanted to actually apply my own custom shaders to the structure. So I want to create a shading that sort of uh, just uses two shaders, one to show off this part of the structure and the other to show the rest of the structure. Um, so I'm going to go in the hyper shade. I actually have a couple shaders already set up and um, I'm going to import these into the hypershade, and these are also available on the DVD that comes with the magazine. So in the hypershade, I'm going to go File, Import, and these shaders are in the project file under Render Data Shaders. So I'm going to import Shader 1, and it's an MIA shader. It's just nice and blue, and then I'll go File, Import, and I'll select Shader 2 which is a similar shader, but it's kind of more purple. So there we go. One and two. And I created these out of a MIA shader uh, so they're compatible with render passes and things like that. Um, so what I want to do now is a couple things. First, I'm going to turn off the CPV um, preview so that I no longer have the baked um, uh, ambient occlusion because that'll inter interfere with the uh, representation of the uh, structure here in Maya. So go to the meshing and turn, click on toggle CPV display to turn that off. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off meshes so I can only I only need to worry about my initial structure. I'm going to select this mesh right here and in the hypershade go right click over shader 1 and choose assign material to selection. Um, it's probably going to turn black just because this is a slightly complex shader network and Maya doesn't always do a good, uh, good job of displaying MIA shaders within the interface. And now I have these structures selected. I'm going to uh, right click over the purple shader, shader 2, and do assign material to selection. And just to make things a little bit easier, I'll go in the shading and turn on use default material just so I can see the structure. So now that I have that uh, turned on, I'm going to, um, under biological unit, uh, I'm going to turn on meshes again. And you'll see the meshes return. And I'll switch to uh, the render cam and do a render using a mental ray. And here we have the result. It's a nice looking shader. It has a little bit of ambient occlusion built into the shader and a little of the x-ray effect and so on and so forth. It's just one of my own little recipes for x-ray shaders. Um, and I'll store this here in the render view and minimize that. Uh, if you render it and you notice that um, the shaders haven't updated on other parts of the uh, biological unit, what you can do is turn off meshes and make sure that toggling off, well actually what you should do is, I'll turn on meshes, let me do that again. Um, make sure toggling off is set to delete units as opposed to hide units because this will refresh the uh, shader applied to the surface. So make sure this is set to delete units, turn meshes off and then turn it on again and then you should see that the correct shaders have been applied uh, to your surface. So that's uh, if you want to add your own custom shaders. You know, another thing you can do is just take the shaders that are already applied and make adjustments or replace them one at a time. Depends on, on uh, what you prefer to do. Um, the other thing I want to show you is, uh, let's say that, uh, well, for instance, uh, currently the way this is set up is the structure is closely tied to uh, using uh, history. Um, to each of the different nodes within the PDB section. So the particle nodes, the bonds, the surface, and so on and so forth. So at the moment it's kind of difficult to animate this entire structure. If you wanted this flying around a scene or bouncing around a cell or whatever, um, you have a hard time doing that because of the historical connection to all these different nodes. So if you want to create a version that um, is easy to work with that doesn't require um, uh, that doesn't have any connection to the original PDB node, uh, go up to the top and there's a button here called Sever from M Maya. And what this is going to do is this is going to essentially delete history on the surface so then you can rig it using bones, locators, 
animate it, animate the group, so on and so forth. Just remember to save a version before you press a button because once you press a button you can't go back to the original PDB node so you can no longer easily change the way that uh, the protein is represented. So make sure you save a version before clicking this button then click the button and save another version uh, with the history deleted. That way you at least have something to go back to if you decide to change your mind about something. So I'm going to click on Sever from M Maya, and it will take a few seconds. And then what you'll notice is that now I have this group node, and um, I have uh, I still have these nodes here at the top for the original model, but you notice on these guys, on the uh, subsequent uh, parts of the model, I just have a simple surface there, and I can parent this group to um, to a locator or you know rig it or so on and so forth, and then go about animating it. Um, now the other thing, of course, you can do is you can always just duplicate this and delete history on the duplicate, and uh, um, and then work with it from and then move on from there. I believe the other sections of this model are still instanced. So if I expand this, yeah, that's a chain one surface shape. So if I go down to another part of the model and expand chain one, you'll see that this node is still called chain one surface. So if you needed to, uh, for some reason, convert those instance parts of the geometry to uh, its own independent node, you'll just have to select each one and go through and choose uh, modify. Um, convert. Uh, instance to object. Uh, but that's, you know, sort of standard Maya workflow right there. Uh, but for the moment you should be able to anim animate this using the uh, the overall group node pretty easily. So I'm going to save this file and I'll save it as mMaya demo version 2 and this will be available on the DVD as well. Uh, I'm not including these files. These are test files that I use to set up this tutorial. I'll just I'm just going to include mMaya demo start, mMaya demo version 01, and mMaya version mMaya demo version 02. These will be on the DVD if you want to play with. Them. And there you go. There's much more to explore uh, with molecular Maya. Uh, it's truly a, an ingenious tool. And thanks a lot to Gail McGill and Campbell Strong for creating it. For my own work creating science animations, it's uh, saved countless hours of tedious setup. Uh, it makes things um, very easy to do and uh, you no longer need to rely on programs such as Chimera or Pymol. You can do everything within Maya and get a, a molecular animation up and running uh, very very quickly without a whole lot of work. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, please uh, read through the article in the magazine uh, for more information and then of course always uh, as always you can visit the mMaya um, Molecular Maya Toolkit webpage. And you can find out more information about Molecular Maya by watching these helpful videos that were created by Gail McGill. Uh, thanks very much and good luck.